Hi everyone, it's Al, another plumbing video. This one I keep getting asked for a lot. Uh, and it regards uh, a radiator um, where you find that just the top of it is getting hot, the very top, and the bottom, this third down here, uh, is stone cold. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether you bleed the radiator um, or even if you try balancing the reds, um, you'll still find you just get this top bit hot and the bottom bit is cold. So, what is it and what's the problem? Well, it's basically black sludge crud in the bottom of the radiator and there's really only one way to get it out and that is to take the radiator off, uh, take it outside and flush it through. So, that's what I'm going to do today, show you how to do this quite simple and easy job. We'll get on it straight away, shall we? Right, so first thing off then, we're going to isolate the radiator uh, and all we've got to do, if you've got a thermostatic, is just turn it clockwise all the way down until it stops. Mine, it's a zero, and that side of the radiator is now off. So now we go to the other end of the radiator. Now, on my end, actually, I've got a turn valve, but normally what you find is you've got what they call a lock shield valve, and you just pull the cap off, or if it's got a screw in it, undo the screw and then pull the cap off, and that will reveal the valve. Before you go turn this valve off, just remember how many times that you've turn the top. So there's one full and then there's two full and then there's three full turns, four full turns, five full turns, six full turns, seven full turns, eight full turns, Eight and a half. Why I'm asking you to remember that, yours may only be on about a turn or two turns, um, is because this, this valve is used for balancing your system in your house. So when you turn it back on when this job is finished, make sure you turn it on the same amount of turns that you just turned it off. That will mean your system will still remain balanced and you won't end up with rads hot somewhere or a cold rad somewhere else in the house because that rad is now taking all the heat. So it's a fairly important one to remember. Right, so next we're going to undo the unions. Right, we're ready to undo one end of our radiator now. Um, tools I like, adjustable spanner and a pair of footprints, but something else that will go on top of that uh, rad valve to hold against is what you need. I use these to hold against. Now, look, what I'm going to show you here is you get your adjustable spanner and get it on your union nut. Now, don't just pull that up. It comes up this way, all right, to turn it, undo it. So. Don't just do that because you could break this seal here on the radiator. It must be held against, otherwise you could damage that joint. And that's where these came in. I like to put them over the top of the valve like that. Now you can put cloth and that around it if you want to protect the valve, but these valves are a bit old, I'm not too worried about them. Been off a million times. Um, but you can put a piece of cloth around these footprints, you don't want to mark anything. And then just hold against and pull up like that. All right, now once it's gone up like that, you can release those grips and just undo it. Now, when you first undo it, nothing much is going to come out. I'll just pull him looser, and you'll see that nothing much is happening there. The odd drip, but nothing much. And that is because you need air to enter the top of the radiator before that can start running. So now we're going to move to this end of the radiator at the top because we need now to open an air cock to allow the air to enter the radiator, as I've said which will allow that to run. So open your air valve okay, and let the air in so that the water can run out. So now we've just got to wait with a little receptacle on the bottom by the valve to let the water run out. When it's all run out, we can undo the other side. If the water was very slow to come out, wedge something between uh, the braid the there and the valve just to, to leave it out and it will make it run a bit faster. I use a pair of footprints and you can see now it's really starting to run. So now all we've got to do as I say is wait for it to empty it. Then we'll do the other end of the valve, undo the thermostatic one. Right, that just leaves our thermostatic end now. Um, once again, hold against like so and we're going to turn this nut down that way, all right, to undo it. Now, don't be tempted to unscrew the head to get it out of the way, because if you do, it'll allow the pin to pop up and you'll get water at the other end you've just disconnected. So you've got to do it with this head on, all right? So don't try and 
undo it and think it'll be easier because you will get a little flood. Uh, and once again, with the chrome, if you're a bit worried, an old towel or something around it like that, if you don't want to damage uh, the chrome. And uh, spanner on, this is my house, so I'm not too worried. <laughs> spanner on, hold against, and we should just be able to go down on it like so. And that's now undone. We'll take that away now because it will turn. I have an old bit of towel on the other end because you still get a few drips out even though um, it's now empty. Right, so just do that now. Right, once you're undone, just pull your valves out like so, so it's on the clear, the same the other end, just so that it's clear of the pipe and then we're ready to lift it away. So now I'll show you how to lift it off. I don't mind my head on this. <laughs> um, just grab a firm grip on the radiator. Alright, then we're going to lift it off, off the brackets. When you get it off, hold it level and then tilt it towards the bowl. Because there will be some black sludge in there that will want to come out and it's pretty nasty stuff. So shake that out. Once that's out and stop dripping, you're quite safe to take it away. I'm going to take it out the back and show you now how to flush it through. Um, there's a nice handy drain ready for this to run out of. Um, and what we're going to do now is flush it through. Put it on something like an old towel that I've got there. We don't want to scratch it. Okay, because we're going to turn this upside down now in order to do it. So put your whole rag up the other way and put it on the towel or whatever you've got. And you can admire the dust that's in the back of your head because it always gets here. Look, it's great stuff. Very <laughs> homely. Okay, so now we're going to show you how to, how to flush this through. Right, we have our hose here. Um, it's connected to my outside tap. Now, if you're lucky to have these type of units, which are nice little thin nuts, it's very easy to get a hose on there because uh, it's a perfect kind of fit for half inch like that. Okay, well, I've got to hold it on there, obviously, when, it, when this goes, because it's going to need two people, one to turn your tap and one to hold the hose on like that while we flush it through. Now, there will feel a bit of back pressure there, so be careful to hold it. This rad actually hasn't got anything in it at all. It's mining doors, it's fully clean, but I'm just showing you this if you've got this problem at home so don't expect to see too much black out of this one <laughs> right it should be clean or cleanish okay so now we're going to we're going to do the actual flush there we go there we go as you can see mine's pretty clean because uh it's not actually blocked mine works fine <laughs> this is just to show you this is a, if this was really bad you'd get a lot of black horrible sludge out of there all right but because we've got it up this way, we're kind of trying to flush it through that way. So, yeah, let it run. If you keep the hose on, let it run completely clear, and then we're going to go to the other end. There's our other end coming out there. You may need to do this several times until it all runs clear. Depends how bad you're ready. Okay, when you're happy, it's pretty clear. We're going to turn it up the other way, let it out into a drain. If you've got a drain like this handy, it's very very useful. <laughs> it doesn't go all over the place too much, does it? Believe me, it is worth doing this. It will make a difference. If the pressure out your hose is a bit slow and it's not very, because my pressure's turned down a bit, turn it up on your main stop pop and give it full pressure so it really goes in there with a blast. You can use a jet trigger in there, might help give it a bit more push, uh, but get as much pressure in there as you can to get that black sludge out. Right, once you're happy that's all out, we can get the rest out there. You can lift it if it's a double, it's an easy lift. If it's a big double, you might need a hand, all right? Don't try and do it on your own, it's a big red. There you go. That's about it. We're ready now to uh, take her back in and stick her back on. We'll go through that now. Well, here we are, our ray out of back indoors again. We're going to mount it back on the brackets now. If your pipes are a little bit tight on those, and those uh, stalks, you can always get someone just to put it back a bit for you like that. Okay, if they're a little bit tight. Um, it's just one of those little tips. Makes it easier to drop the radiator on. Make sure these little rubber inserts don't pop out. They help stop rattle and noises from the radiator when it's heating up. Make sure you don't lose those. And then a straight lift, we just literally put it on. I, I tend to go for the bottom ones first. Just add it, I guess. But you know, it's really up to you. If you need two people, one each end, then do get two people to do it. If, don't try and do it on your own if it's a really big radiator. Honestly, you'll do your backing. Well, you can check that your rad's on properly. Just have a look around the back here. You should see it sat inside the little rubber grummet there on the bracket. So check the other backside as well, and the one down the bottom. 
make sure the sat in there uh, and then you know it's properly back where it should be. Well, there we are. I mean, you just pop your pipes back in. All right, just stack them in like that and just hold it there and start it with your other hand. I usually just start up straight and easy, like so. All right, do it up. Make sure the other end's in first as well. We do any tightening. Might as well tighten it up, it's in place. Once again, if you don't want to mark your radiator valve, something like an old towel around it like that, just to hold against. Careful when you do up, you don't scratch or knock the plastic cap. So do it from the bottom like that. Don't go too far around, just in case. All right, you'll fill it tighten. Don't have to go too mad, but enough. Okay, when you fill it, grip there. That's it, I can fill it there. All right, that's that one. And we simply do the other one up. Then your locks your side, once again. Once you're there, and happy with it, that's it. And that's about it now. We're ready to turn the radiator on and uh, we fill her up, shall we? And it, hopefully this time it should work a dream. Right, lock shield end. Don't forget, you count it how many times, how many times you turn that on. Do it the same amount that you turned it off. All right, I know how many mine are, so I'm just gonna, not gonna bore you with it, but don't forget to do that. Very important, we don't want your system unbalanced when we're finished. So, bleed your rad, hear the air come in there, let it bleed out now, when it's full we should be ready to go, turn the heating back on, and uh, really that's the job, it's not too bad, there we go, there's the water, best to have a cloth under it, <laughs> right, let it go down the wall like that, you mean, if you've got nice paper on there it's not good, alright, um, shut it off, we're ready to go, um, turn the heating on, should all work a treat now. Um, and that is about the job really. It's something you can still manage at home. You don't need to call a plumber in for this. It's something that's quite manageable in my book. So, you know, do it and get your heat back to your rads. If you've only got half a rad heating up and it's not here and it's the bottom that's cold, that's usually the answer. All right, thanks for watching. My, all my videos know where to go. Usual place, Derrickton33.com. Keep the faith, guys, and keep watching. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.